Hello everybody and how are we doing today? Oh man, I am so excited we're going to be playing a Mass Effect tabletop game! This is so good! How is everybody? I'm good. We're fine, we've just been waiting for a while. Well, you know, <laughs> technical difficulties and all that, you know what I mean? Like, that's just, that's just how it goes sometimes. No, it is. It is. I always explain. Yeah. It's like an RPG stream cannot be on time. It, it really is. It is a struggle to say the least for, for everybody to be on time. So, um, sadly, because of the te technical difficulties, there are a few things. Like, for instance, um, I don't have the names on the overlay so people can see who you are. I'll get them up as we move forward with the character creation um, just so it can be seen. But if you would like to introduce yourself really quickly, uh, we'll start with you, Ollie. Oh, see, I can't see the <laughs> Yeah, I'm that's Ollie. gonna be a challenge. You probably Somebody already know can. me. I do my streams, and I'm on Scott's streams. So I'm on this one too, because I have nothing else to do. Grandfathered in, really. Grandfathered in, exactly. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. It's not because I wanted you here. It's not because you enjoy Mass Effect. It's just, eh, I know the silly eh. Brit, so we're gonna throw him in the show. I need <laughs> someone else on my show. Yeah. Right. I need someone else on my show. After Ollie, um, if the lady would like to introduce herself. Hello, Rebecca. Rookie, Wookies, Wookie, whatever. Um, not streamed before. No. But I like Mass Effect a lot. Yeah, this is it's the first time, and this is this is so excited. This is so ex uh, uh, exciting because never streamed before. Um, barely any tabletop experience, but the most important thing, you love Mass Effect. So, um, I mean, I'm hoping to bring a, my own unique way of showing the world. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, we have some fun with it. The and, only way anyone will know me is because of Dean. So. Oh yeah, that's right. Dean, Dean Cuddy? Is that, who's that guy? Some weirdo. Yeah, you had said something about Dean before. Um, some mass Very stuff. rude things, jeez. Yeah, yeah, you know what? <laughs> Honestly, it was it, like it left a bitter taste in my mouth. But so yeah, who is, who is um, who's that? Who's yeah, that? some dude, some dude. Mm. I think he's in some chat dude. even. Yeah. Probably not important to mention, I guess. Yeah, uh, your your volume's a little quiet there, uh, uh, rookie. If you can uh, bump it in any way, super appreciated. And then lastly, but certainly not leastly, who are you? Hi, I'm Rick. I go by Derb Digital on YouTube and on Twitch. I stream occasionally, I upload videos every day, I play games, it's pretty cool. I haven't played Mass Effect before, or played any tabletop RPGs, but I do mod for Enter Elysium and roll for it, so yeah, should be fun. It's, it, so it's funny, because again, not a uh, big TTRPG player, but um, like you said, you've been modding for it for a long time over on Roll For It, so you're very familiar with the world. So it's gonna be fun to introduce you to it, much like we introduced Bear to it, much like back when Roll For It first started, it was new to Bentham and Shen and many others. So it's fun because we get to see you flower and bloom as a nerd. Um, <laughs> but then beyond that, um, yeah, uh, you said you'd never played Mass Effect before, right? You just love hanging around and making me gamble on Quasar. <laughs> <laughs> I love the universe, but I, I, I don't know. I just figured at some point in my life that eh, maybe RPGs and stuff, eh, maybe not. So I always kind of skip them, but I do love the universe and the story and whatnot. So I'm reasonably aware of the things that go on and whatnot. One of the Mass Effect wiki is just a good read. Oh, it's a like really good read. Hours yeah. of time. Yeah. It is yeah. Really good. Wasted reading. That's... So much more. I've stumbled across it once or twice, and it took me a while to leave. <laughs> uh, I mean, indoctrination theory is a, is a really good like seven hour documentary to watch. But so one of the reasons why I really liked the idea of you joining the show with us, of, of you playing this game with us, is that you are actually not very familiar with the universe. So I can give you a small amount of human history, but uh, because you're playing in uh, what is it, uh, 2164 is the year, and again that's not displayed in the overlay yet now, anyways, because this is not the real overlay. It's beautiful, it's polished, it's great, but it's not unique. Uh, this is actually artwork taken from Bioware to make this put, come together nice and pretty. So I am having an uh, a overlay be made for next week. The artist that I was working with ended up not really working out. So um, I'm uh, gonna have one ready for next week. But, so uh, this is taking place in 2164 when humanity more or less just joins uh, the, the galactic society, uh, just became uh, one of the Citadel races. So this is amazing because you get to experience it as, as a human experiencing races for the first time. Like, wait, what? We just met these things seven years ago? Yep. And your character's just meeting them for the first time today. So feel free to just full on gawk at Elcor and stuff like that. Like, 
It's the same thing we had with our with our Friday game. Like I knew nothing about Eberron, so we could easily ask questions in the universe, and it's like, oh, okay, blah 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 blah. Yeah. So this is just gonna end up taking a Warhammer 40k turn where we purge the Xenos, really. No, no, <laughs> you you cannot purge all the aliens. Humans are a tiny insignificant speck. You you, you think that. But yet, in every video game, I wonder why, we're always so unique and have the ability to alter everything, right? They always seem to recognize our strength as well. Yeah, oh, for some reason, we are just amazing. I wonder why. Almost like humans are the ones that made the game. Oy vey. <laughs> um, uh, anyways, so uh, we are here to, to, to make characters today, um, which I'm excited about. I'm here to, uh, to make characters with you guys. So, um, we are, uh, I'm trying to fix that on my, my screen here, and where is it? So, nope, wrong one. Uh, so what is it? I was, uh, we're, we're here to try to make the characters to, uh, to get everything going with that. Um, I suppose, I suppose before we can do anything, you really have to roll for your stats, don't you? But Scott... What system are we playing? Oh, I'm sorry. That's a really good question. Um, we are playing in Stars Without Number with uh, my own modified uh, rules to it to make sure that this actually works out well. That's what's up. That's why I'm really here. Yeah, we're playing Man in. Honest. We're playing in in altered Stars Without Number. There we go. I was like, I knew I had to change a couple of things to get that up. Ha ha. So there we go. So um, uh, we're playing in altered Stars Without Number to make sure that you know. The, the, the system is very dangerous, but still has that awesome otherworldly feel to it. So, um, where were we? I need to get you that macro for rolling your stats. And so, character sheets. Oh, yeah. Character sheets are going to apply to you right now because I think you guys just joined the game, right? So, um, add character, add character, add character. Uh, if only you can add character some of that easy. We're going to name this one Ollie for now and give it to Ollie. Ollie. <laughs> um, we're gonna name this one uh, Rookie. Oop. Uh, rookie's not spelt with two Ks. Um, nope. This is all players. Give this one to uh, Rebecca. And then last one. Oop. Save. There we go. Go away. And last one, we're gonna name this one Derp. Because I just love that. It's so funny. It makes me happy. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of upset with my with Twitch just because you know yep, the deep. whole like emote prefix thing. It's like yeah, derp face is like made to be. It's made to be, and then it's like no, you're gonna use derp and you're gonna stick with that. Yeah, you're stuck with it, buddy. Me, me and Scott at least does sound kind of cute. We've got like Ollie Rand and Dale, and you've got like derp thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is it's definitely It's unnatural. Worse. It just. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. All right, so um, memorable. Uh, memorable, but for all in the good way. It's the, it's the quest exactly. So uh, if you guys want to open up your character sheets really quickly, you can see that I made the character sheets for you. Yay! Um, Yay! And here's my charge and macro. So I made the character sheets for you. Yay over there. Um, but with those character sheets, you are um, uh, you might notice that because I haven't fully made them responsive yet, so they have everything you need for making the character, not fully responsive, so you might just need to widen them out a smidge more so they snap into place for what looks more natural. Uh, you see you see how, as soon as I said that, you found it? Where am I looking again? Because I can't see anything. Um, On the second bit with your journal. Yeah, I don't see it. Okay, so what you have is in the top right-hand corner of your of your uh, roll for it. Sorry, roll for it. In the top right-hand <laughs> corner of your roll 20, uh, you have uh, a few different tabs that you can click on. One of them is going to look like a picture in front of a picture, like folded over itself. Uh, sorry, no, not that one. The one's going to look like a newspaper. That's your journal. You'll see one named Rookie. It's literally just blank under that tab. Okay, so when you uh, when you open, wait, it's blank. It doesn't say Rookie. <laughs> it's just nothing there. That's weird. Uh, refresh, re, uh, just yeah. you know, control R, refresh the screen. That that's normal roll twenty issues. Well, that's promising. No, no, hey, roll, tw don't roll, worry about it. roll twenty always has issues. It's honestly, it's one of those things where they, they host so much crap. Such a good service, so many people use it that yeah. it starts something glitching out every now and again. Still empty. Uh, really? Yeah. Weird. Okay. Uh, can uh, I'm gonna do something else really quickly. So I'm going to go over to Rookie, and I'm going to press all players instead. 
and see if this pops up now. Aha. Hey, now you can see it? Yeah. Do you remember when I said that this this um Roll20 claimed that I hadn't joined before, but I was in it before with you? Yeah. So you might have added the other one that <gasps> I can't claim. Oh, collect. that is exactly what I did. <laughs> you had said that, and I totally didn't see that there's a uh. rookie wookies down there. Okay, fix now. All fixed. Okay, so now you guys opened up your character sheet, and you uh you you know went over to the, the actual character sheet tab. Like I said, you widen it a smidge, and it's going to snap into place for what looks more beautiful, for, for what looks better. Beautiful. Um, there we go. And you can see how the character sheet kind of lays out. But why don't we get into what the rules are for this game? Uh, actually, you guys have roles, things that you want to do. Uh, but before you can do that, we kind of have to see what your stats are going to be. And this gets a, a little a little exciting. This is a little fun. Because it starts with our number, you basically don't choose. So, so we're going to have Ollie right. roll for his stats first because, you know, it's going mm -hmm. to be fun. Uh, Ollie, rolling for your stats first. Could you do me a favor? Um, oh, over. Uh, yeah. I have a macro sitting there, for, sitting there for you. So if you press the little hamburger menu, um, up in the yeah. top right hand corner of the screen. Hamburger menu. What the fuck? What? That's, that's what we call them. And web no, develop you do and web not. development. You call it a hamburger menu. No. Well, you call it a hamburger, but it's a menu, so it's a hamburger menu. I also hate the term hamburger. Why? What would you, what do you, what do you call it? Meat wad? A burger. It's a hamburger. Why is the ham gotta be there. 3d6 in order is in fact what they're rolling in case anybody's curious 3d6 in order and ollie you got a great charisma that's great actually charisma, not bad great intelligence. Oh all i God. wanted okay so so that's actually not bad so in stars not number i have it listed right there to make it nice and easy for you to see uh if you roll between a 8 and a 13 the modifier is zero if you roll between a four and seven or a 14 and 17, it's a negative one or plus one respectively. And then a three or an 18 or negative two plus two respectively. Now, after you roll for your stats, you have the ability to switch out one of those for a 14, which makes it automatically a plus one, which means Ollie, you could sit here and take your eight dexterity, which is zero, um, your nine wisdom, which is zero, or you can take, or your nine constitution, or you can take your intelligence and increase it by only one, but that one is a modifier. Yeah, make your uh, rules well, better. I'm planning on being an engineer. Intelligence no, is no. are you planning on engineer or sentinel? That's the thing. That's the thing. I don't really. I'm still torn between engineer and sentinel because sentinel is the biotic class, right? That's fine. Yes, it is. You can think about that for a moment, but just so you understand, the way that stars without numbers works and the way that I've modified biotics to work, it's actually going to be based off of uh, both. Uh, wisdom and constitution, the higher of the two for you, which is the same number for you. So you can choose which one you want. One? It doesn't really matter. So you can boost one of those if you'd like or not. You can think about that. All right, everybody else, did you find who that macro was? Nope. Well, yeah, although I don't see why that's called a hamburger thing anyway. Just, yeah, I found it. Uh, would you like to go, would you like to go um, uh, second? <laughs> I, I misspelled strength and slashes is ragging on me for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, my stream was stream. Do not expect I'm going to be spelt right. Okay? Oh god. Oh, uh, that's funny. That's good stuff. That's okay. You know what? Your strength is 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 I... important. Your strength. <laughs> All right. Um, go right ahead. Um, uh, Rick, if you would like to click that button and see what your results are. You're wicked smart. You're wicked smart. Wicked That's so smart. funny. You were thinking about playing the dumb soldier, and well, not necessarily a dumb soldier. Well, fair but enough. Fair enough. You, the the soldier. Stereotypical, sir. Stereotypical soldier. So once again, you can choose that fourteen to replace anything for what it is that you want. Melee combat is based off of uh, strength or dex, depending on what you're doing. Ranged combat is uh, based off of dex, as well as many other things. Ah, uh, man, this is great. So, um, mm. yeah. I will let you contemplate that for a minute. And again, you can switch out one of those modifiers. Remember, these these aren't terrible stats. Right now, you have zero minuses. You don't have any penalties whatsoever, and you have one bonus, which is nice. All right, rookie. Right. Do I have to press that add button? Because I was trying to fix my microphone, because people are still saying in the chat that I'm quiet, but it's on full. So. Yeah, you you sound normal to me. I'll boost yeah. up. I'll boost up the general yeah, you sound audio. Fine to me. Yeah, I'll boost up the general audio for you guys. You're just not a very loud person. It's like when I play with Aaron or Rick. <laughs> you, you, you ladies just happen to be uh, quieter. 
So I, I imagine so you get sorry. A, a couple beers in you and that might change around. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So uh, did you find the uh, the button? Is it the add button? Uh, so in the top right hand corner, there is. Yeah, that I've got that menu. Okay. Yep. So in there, it's the one that says charge in. You're going to press the one that looks like a D20 next to where it says charge in. Oh, God. Deal. Right, I've clicked it. Then click test. Oh, well, that works. So if you actually click the little die, it auto rolls for you. There we there go. There we go. It's oh, my God. You're even more charismatic. But, oh, <laughs> oh, you dumb as rocks. <laughs> you're dumb. Oh, you're wow. Charismatic and strong. Oh. Which means you're going to be real fun good. to draw. Yeah. Uh, that kind of goes with what I said to you. What I had in mind, though, to be fair. Um, you know what? It does, actually. You know what? It does. And so, and then you're actually tough, too. Look at your con. You're actually tough, too. Um, honestly, my suggestion for you and the concept that you and I were discussing prior, which we're going to get into those in a moment, mm -hmm. uh, you'd switch out that 14 to your dex so you can have a plus one in dex. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, this is great. Everyone is quiet. That's hilarious. Let me see if I can beef up everyone. Your, your, your streams are always quiet anyway. No, so. I, I've balanced them out for, for you guys in the past, so this yeah. should be better. We are on a different service than normal. This is a very different service than normal. So we're yeah, using that's Zoom true. Instead of, instead of Skype. With Skype, you guys were super grainy and like, it was super bad. Like, was, <laughs> you guys are clear and beautiful now. I can see you in all of your motherland glory. So, uh, well, two of you. Did someone mention the motherland? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. You're not a Brit. Um, uh, what's, the, what's the joke my wife wanted me to say? Um, I love Brits so much I married one. Which is <laughs> true. <laughs> Her name's, her name's okay, I like that. Yeah. I'll accept that joke. Yeah. Sorry, it's a wife joke. Hashtag wife joke. Yeah, that is a wife joke. <laughs> it's a bad one. Wow. Oh. Alright, uh, asking me to boost my own audio. Am I too quiet now? There we go. Uh, thank you, Dean. All right, so. Alrighty. Um, okay, so let's go. Let's let, let's start with the most uh, put together concept out of all of them so far. Rookie Wookie. Uh, out of the six classes that are found in Mass Effect, which are Soldier, uh, Engineer, Adept, Vanguard. Uh, Sentinel and Infiltrator, you had one that stuck to you, okay? Now, before you say what that is, Soldier is like the fighter type, Engineer is like the rogue or skill monkey type, uh, Adept is like the caster, and then there's the other three are combinations of them. Engineer being the, uh, sorry, the Infiltrator being the semi-fighter, semi-rogue, the Vanguard being the semi-fighter, semi-caster, and Sentinel being the uh, semi-caster, semi-skill monkey. Those are the six options that you have before you. In this game, in 2164, as humans only, because of how it is we're doing this, I'm gonna lay that out in a moment, um, uh, Adept is not an option, and Vanguard and Sentinel have limitations. That won't be true when we uh, do the next one in a little bit, get to that shortly again, um, but you had one that stuck to you, and that one was? Yes. It was Infiltrator. The Infiltrator, yes. So it is a, a, a fun concept. Would you like to uh, tell us just a little blip about your character, um, and then we're gonna go into how to generate it? Um, sniper bitch. <laughs> 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 she just says sniper bitch. Nice. Uh, yeah, sniper bitch. Um, as you can see, my wisdom is quite low, quite naive, quite quiet. She nice. likes to listen because she's not stupid. Like. Not stupid enough to put herself in shit situations. So she leaves her talking to everybody else, but when she talks, she's fucking quiet. She's tough. She's got charisma. She's good. But she snakes. So she's far away. Good, good, good. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm having a hard time with that one. So, um, alright, cool. So sniper bitch it is. And it looks like your attributes are going to be, correct me if I'm wrong, um, 8, 14, 15, 7, 8, and 17. If you'd like to put it on your character sheet, and I'm trying to display the character sheets on the menu now, but in the meanwhile, while you're applying those on there, why don't we go over to uh, 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 Rick, are you ready to make your decision on which one you're switching out, or do you need a moment? Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, what do you think would be the best for, um, like, you, you know which direction I roughly felt like taking. Actually, so. yeah, my apologies. Why don't you tell me the direction that you were thinking about taking? I, I didn't ask you that. I was thinking of playing, uh, well, quote-unquote, simple and just going as a soldier because I'm not really that familiar to the universe so maybe being tech heavy wouldn't work out that well so just give me a bunch of guns and I'll shoot things you know that that works for me 
Well, I mean, it, there's, it, it certainly would make things a bit easier if you were to play that soldier, that simpler concept to start. So we can totally uh, work on that one. And so your, uh, your question was what? Yeah, what do you think would be best? Like, obviously, I don't know what stats are going to be used for the, the range and melee combat and that much just yet. Mm -hmm. But what do you Strength think would be best. better to switch out? Um, like, I, I'm thinking Dex to not get hit all that often, because I, I imagine Dex will be beneficial for dodging and whatnot. Dex is going to be your armor class. It's also going to be your ability to shoot. Having a good dexterity is going to be important in this game. Um, uh, strength is going to be good if you're going to be more of that melee style of character, which is not very common in the Mass Effect world, um, but definitely exists if that's something that you wanted to do. Actually, we had a quick discussion about that beforehand. Um, we did, yeah. We were talking about the tomfuckery of... Uh, of of melee combat in this world. Um, so anyways, yeah, you can, um, uh, switch, if you were to switch up decks, it would probably be beneficial for you. Yeah, okay, so that becomes a 14, you said? Um, yes, sir. That would be a 14 automatically, and you can start applying that to your character sheet. And all right. now, I think, uh, Ollie, if you'd like to do yours next. Well, I'm, I'm torn between two issues. So the original character I, I had in mind when we were talking about doing Mass Effect was an engineer type of pilot, like engineer, but a pilot, which is something you can later choose because I've been researching the system, mm -hmm. um, which for that I would bo boost my intelligence by one because I have fairly nice stat lines. I already have fairly nice everything, but my intelligence by one would me give me a plus one or I increased my constitution and become a biotic sentinel but the, the thing is to bear in mind of course we're playing very early game biotic early universe biotics which will be very fun to role play and stuff uh but i'm not sure which i want yet <laughs> that's the thing both ideas sound really fun because i mean it's always fun playing a, a, a space-based rpg with a pilot character mm -hmm. just gets out of the way a lot of problems plus uh, the the skills for being a, an engineer and pilots is pretty damn fun, but uh, biotics are also pretty damn fun because I've had a sneak peek at some of the rules you've made. So the rules <laughs> that I made are designed not for this initial game. So now that we've kind of talked about mm -hmm. the initial idea, concepts, let me get into a little bit of the game so everybody can see what, how or what it is that we're making for characters. So we're playing in 2164. This is exactly seven years after the first contact war when humans, or what is it, Incident uh, 314, where humans uh, were just kind of like, wow, look at this crazy cool technology! And they were like <laughs> flying around the galaxy just kind of like, let's go everywhere! Ex expanding. And, humans and, do that. Exactly. We were cockroaches and we just found a new kitchen sink. So we are, we are just trying to go all over the place. It's like that old movie Joe's Apartment. If you don't get the reference, better for you. So um, you guys are just going everywhere and just trying to take over the galaxy because you have all these wonderful places that you can go. Human expansion, yay. Um, things like that tend to stop wars back at home from happening too, which is a good thing in most sci-fi. So it's a good thing. Yay, we're having a great time. So you guys are off and doing all of that uh, when all of a sudden you go to activate one of the Mass Effect relays and uh, the Torians are like, whoa, 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 look at these morons. They're not supposed to do that. It's against the law. Way shoot them down. Whoa. What are these humans doing here? So, so <laughs> what they do is they shoot down uh, the, the, uh, um, the, the humans and in shooting down the humans, uh, the humans are like, oh crap, this is bad. And so we like retaliate back and forth and, and then they eventually find, so they, they easily defeat us. And then we come back and hit them and we hurt them a little bit. And so they're like, oh, we don't like this. We found their main colony and they found a colony of ours that was of decent size. And like, we must have found the majority of who they are. Let's kick their ass. And they did, they kicked their ass and they pinned us down and there was nothing we can do. But then all of a sudden humans were like, ha ha ha, you didn't realize exactly how powerful we are. And we come swooping we in fleet. with this like ridiculous fleet that should not be, a, we should not have a fleet that size, but capitalism, baby. So humans, we, humans. We made, we made so many freaking ships and we came and beat the shit out of them. And so they were like, okay, yeah. You got us. You kicked their ass. But you don't understand what it's like to be the military force of a galactic uh, society. And so they start gearing for war. And the Torians at that point in time could have wiped out humanity. No question. You give it another 20, 25 years, different story. But at that point in time, Torians could wipe out humanity. 
And so then luckily the, the, the Citadel Council, which consists of Torian, Salarian, and Asari representatives, uh, stepped in and they were like, no, 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 no. This was a mistake. These are kids. It was like when, it, when a child sits on a, steps on a dog's tail. Yes, I understand the dog nips the kid, but you don't have to like disembowel him and devour everything that you come across. It was a mistake. It's okay. Wait, why are we dogs in this scenario? We're actually birds. Fine, when they step on a vulture's feathers, however it makes you feel good, Torians. And, um, and then the kind of, like, a, a, a peace is made. But at this point in time, humans' first experience with non-humans is they're fucking trying to kill us. And, and so humans have a lot of racism that kind of, like, springs up because of that. But on the other side of it, uh, the galaxy, because of, like, the extranet, which is, like, their interwebs, the extranet, the way the humans are portrayed is very, um, we're aggressors. We are, like, mean aggressors. So, um, yeah, they are, uh... We're just misunderstood, really. There's bad, no. there's bad vibes going all around the extranet about us. They say bad things about us. And so humans, when they actually finally come out, they're like, oh, okay, cool, let's join this galactic. What? No, we don't do that. We're not mean. And so it makes this, breeds this, like, racism between humans and everybody else. And they already had their own forms of racism. Now, there are going to be some characters that walk in and like, I'm just so excited to not be alone in the galaxy. This gives my life purpose. And then there are others going to have that more fear-filled. You get to choose how your character is going to be. But it understands that in the Alliance, only seven years after the First Contact War, it's only just now that humans are starting to simmer down a little bit. So expect a lot of angst. Expect a lot of like uh, anti uh, alien beliefs amongst the, the Alliance military. Actually, if your character chooses to be racist against the other uh, aliens, you are run of the mill. If you choose to be open minded and completely accepting of them, well, obviously having your, your guards up, you're not an idiot, but generally open minded, you are against the grain on this one. You are you are that weird, crazy lib. Um, so so uh, just kind of keep that in mind going into the universe. Now, Again, um, that means that this first campaign is going to be a quicker one. It's going to be about eight sessions long, and during that first campaign, you're going to play early humans. You only have access to L1 biotic implants, because those were invented last year. L1 biotic implants are functional, but not very good in combat. Um, they're not very powerful. So uh, the reason why I went down this long explanation, Ollie, is because uh, torching, which is the thing that exists in uh, Stars Without Number, and something that you can do with your biotic powers, you cannot uh -huh. do with L1 biotics. You cannot yes. torch. So having lower con and lower wisdom means that you're going to not have a bonus, but you also don't have a penalty. So mm -hmm. it's not like you suck. You might not have to switch out that modifier to get the plus because your biotics aren't going to be very powerful anyways. So you don't have to worry about, like, I need to make it as strong as possible. Yeah, I know. I feel like I'm probably going to switch to Engineer for now anyway. Got that Just idea. Just ditch the space that. magic until it actually becomes powerful. <laughs> yeah, I feel like... Well, you don't have to ditch yeah. it. You can just be like, okay, I'm going to go with this, but just embrace the fact that it's not strong, and then uh, next game... Fuck I mean, if I can out. play an engineer with a little bit of biotics, I, I would, but that I don't think... That is a Sentinel. A Sentinel is an engineer with a little bit of biotics. The only thing that you're missing... Yeah, but I like the I like the, the, the rule that uh, engineer gets, though. Uh, which one? <laughs> I, I'm sure I know exactly which one you're talking uh, about. It's basically per... the specialist thing, right? I'm, I'm looking right Same now. Same specialist in size of our number. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to look and see exactly what it says on here. Let you get to, what is it, re-roll um, basic it, skill checks? Uh, once per scene, you can re-roll a failed skill check, taking the new roll if it's better. Yeah. So it's once per scene, re-roll, but unlike like in D&D where it's, uh, you have to keep the second roll. It's just, it, it, it's, it. it's more or less, you're like, I, and it's not even advantage where you just roll twice and take the better of the two. It's, I saw that I failed. And now I'm re-rolling, and only if it's better do I take it, so I don't have to worry about like critical failures or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it is the yeah, ultimate, yeah, yeah. ultimate good one. So uh, I think I'll go. I think I'll go full engineer and just boost my intelligence by one. I, I think just saw that... what Worm put inside chat, and yes, Worm, there will be space mermaids. Space mermaids. <laughs> um. So you said you're gonna boost your intelligence by one, but are you going to go engineer? or Are you gonna go going to a sentinel? Engineer. Okay, cool. Awesome. Hell yeah. So we've discovered your concept. I'm going to pop your character sheet up over here. Uh, where are you, Ollie? Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why, thank you very much. Thank you very that much. That joke never gets not funny, by the way. Appreciate the subs. Yeah, I know. It's it's funny because even my wife says it. So, yeah. Sorry, Ollie. Um, 
Okay, that, that does work the way I wanted to. So, all you're going to plug your stats in there exactly as you have it 11, 8, 9, yep. uh, 14, 9, 16. Awesome. And then Which is good because, I mean, he's the commanding officer, and I'm also thinking of plan taking authority, so charisma makes sense to me. That's a good one. I'm loving it, loving it. All right, Derp, we've bought you enough time with chatter so you can look things over or just not. Um, what er are you thinking of doing with your character? And let me display these characters back on screen, screen for everybody. Um, yeah, yeah I I've thought things over a little bit. I'm just going to go soldier. It's nice, simple, and just, you know. Awesome. Awesome. So soldier it is. Soldier it is. Um, so with soldier, uh, you decided to beef up your dexterity, I believe, from what it was. and what yep. went. Yeah, okay, you went from a 10 to a 14. So you're actually, two of you are pretty dexterous, which is nice. So why don't we get into the actual, actual character creation? All, you've looked over the rules more than everybody else, so you can more or less... Um, I can basically just start doing service it. ...service yourself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working with, um, with uh, Rick first because his character is a bit simpler, and then we're gonna go over to uh, Rookie next. But Rookie, try to follow along with the things that we're talking about. Yep. So you guys are linked to your the characters over in the Obsidian Portal, and for the viewers, the Obsidian Portal has not been released to the public yet because it's still under construction, but it's not looking bad. It's looking, it's looking good. It's looking all right, right? It's looking good. So, somebody give me a pat on the back. Somebody, anybody? I'll just, I'll, I, I, I got it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Um, it starts with number. Do we start at level one or level zero? Uh, level one. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know how. Hey, we're not nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we so. Got something. Um, if you would like to go over to the infiltrator area, rookie, and then I'm going to go to the soldier yep. area for you, uh, we're going to start talking about what it is you're going to put in there. So, uh, Rick. Uh, first thing that you're going to see is you start with level zero of armor, assault rifles, and pistols. So if you actually scroll down in your character sheet, you're going to see all your different um, uh, skills that are listed there for you, right? So yeah. you're going to um, use your little ticker upper to bring armor, assault rifles, and pistols up to a zero. You'll see that the weapon ones are at negative two and the skill ones are at negative one. And that's just the way that Stars and the Number works, where if, you're, if you don't know how to use a weapon, you fucking suck at it. Whereas if you don't know how to, say, like, talk to somebody, you, you don't... You just don't know how to talk to somebody, right? So bring those three instantly up to one for you, which is nice. Wait, up to one? Uh, sorry, zero. I thought, My apologies. Yeah, zero. yeah. Just, just checking. You know, I wouldn't mind extra bonus, but you know, in the um, interest of fairness. So for uh, proficiencies, because I just decided to blip in here a little way that it works over in um, uh, like Dungeons and Dragons. I have proficiencies for four different types of armor. There is basic, light, medium, and heavy armor. As a soldier and only as a soldier, you start off with basic, light, and medium. So for now, because I, I honestly did not put a spot for this on your character sheet, if you want to throw that down at the bottom where it says notes, you can say proficiency and even just copy and paste it off of the uh, Obsidian Portal if you'd like. Uh, immediately after that, you're going to have um, three skill points that you can spend a character creation. Now, these skill points, it costs you one skill point to get from skill level negative one to skill level zero, and it costs one skill point to get skill level zero to skill level one. So if you would like to choose where to spend those three skill points, and you cannot go to a two. At this level, you can't go to a two until your character is level three, your skill level cannot go to two. So if you'd like to choose where to spend your three skill points, you go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I probably want to go with perception uh, to. Thank you, thank you for the sub and speak a blah. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, oh, Elcor. Jovial anticipation. I can't wait until they have to melee a Krogan. <laughs> oh, oh, I love Elcor. So good. All right. Uh, oh, God. That is going to. Yeah, no. I would like my quad to remain unmolested. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Um, okay, He's so learned about quads. Mm. So where is it that you wanted to do your, um, your... Well, I figured I'd put a point of perception, because a blind soldier, that's not really going to help anyone. And I figured I might go down the uh, the first aid route, down the down the line, just to be like, okay, I can shoot things, but I can, I can also help people, you know? Cool, cool, cool. Not dying is very good. Yep, yep. So if you want to beat, boost that up to a, a zero, which is nice. So just to put this into perspective while you're thinking about your third one there, I want to explain something to the viewers. Back at home. Like, we're not at home. Um, so I mean, they are. The, the way that uh, the skills work is if you're a negative one, uh, the way it's described a negative one is you lack competence in the skill. 
Um, you have zero training, formal or otherwise. Skill level zero, basic competence in the skill such as an ordinary practitioner would have. A one is an experienced professional in the skill, clearly better than most. So you ha are probably going to have a one in maybe assault rifles or something like that that you find to be important, right? You don't have to. Uh, a two, uh, when you get there at level three, should you choose to go there. Veteran expert, one respected by even those considered with a considerable experience. Three, master of the skill, likely one of the best on the planet. It. And four, um, superlative expertise, one of the best in an entire stellar sector. Like when you get to skill level four, which is much higher in level, like you are a fucking badass. That's when you're like Commander Shepard. You know what I mean? All right, so um, where is it you wanted to spend your third point, sir? Well, I was, I was kind of thinking I could boost myself up in assault rifles up to one, mm. but I was also thinking maybe survive, which is not spelled correctly. Like, Basic survival training might not be <laughs> a bad idea either. Oh god, you can totally tell that I was. I was I, when you use the text editor, it doesn't have spell check on it, so I'm just kind of like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm more worried about. Yeah, the so, code so I'm kind of torn between that choice. Like, it would make me a bit more rounded if I also had a bit more survival experience, and you know, if we ever get stranded somewhere, which I don't know might happen, we do go down on planets, you know. You shooting are, stuff you are going to be for a shore party and whatnot so yes why don't you choose survive yeah. as your last one i can survive like no other now survive like no others you survive with basic competence all right <laughs> um, i'm not shit at not dying yay so uh going back over to your class um and soldier we have, uh, you get to choose a Foki, which we're gonna get to those after I help out Rookie Wookie with the basics. I'm gonna let you start reading the Foki so that you can um, uh, kind of get a handling of what it is that you want to do. But, all right, so it says, superlators are lucky, sorry, soldiers are lucky in combat once per fight as an instant ability. You can either choose to negate a successful attack roll against you or turn a missed attack roll into a successful hit. So you can use this ability after the die is rolled. Okay, but it can't be used after like uh, environmental damage. Like that has to be something that actually attacks you. So if you want to copy and paste that little bit onto your notes for now, or however it is that you're going to remember that, you go right ahead and do so. The next okay. Thing, uh, after you do that, the next thing I'm going to have you do is roll for your health points because you do do that. You do. <laughs> um, the way you're going to roll for your health points after you're done copying and pasting is over in roll twenty where it has that little type in area. You're going to type forward slash roll space one d six plus and then your plus is going to be two for being a fighter uh and then you have no con modifier or anything so it's going to be the total of 1d6 plus two so if you'd like to type that okay. in there and enter uh your old two plus two is four health points to start oh god <laughs> no no that's okay because somebody like say all you can have one um, okay, so you have two health points, sorry, four health points to start. I have really three good. health points, if you saw there, because um, I don't have a con bonus. Uh, your uh, attack bonus at level one is going to be one, and you can see that in your character sheet where your attack bonus is. Feel free to throw that one on there. Oh, that's right there, okay, yeah. Okay, there you go, and then at this point, uh, going back over to character creation area, um, you need to choose your background. So your attributes are done, your race is only humans for the first game, your class is chosen, and everything but your foci from your class is thrown on there. Now you need to choose your backgrounds. Now the way that the background works is there's going to be an expanded version of how many backgrounds you can have, but specifically for being a part of the Alliance military where there's 20, um, uh, six different options. I narrowed it down to only, what is it, two, four, six, eight options for you, for what your background is going to be, just to simplify things for the first game. So with these eight option backgrounds, um, the options that you have, so take a step back a step. In the Alliance military, uh, there are ranks just like any other military. You are an E1, E2, E3, an O1, O2, O3, which is like a, a private, private first class, um, uh, Lance Corporal, or like uh, second lieutenant, first lieutenant, you know, things like that, right? Um, but then you also have something called your MVC. Uh, or, or your military vocational code. It's like your job, your expertise, your skill set in the game, yes? So when you choose your background, um, that gives you like certain skills or whatever that go to your character. Um, your background, your MVC is gonna be linked together. So let's say for instance, you're like, I want to be straight up infantry. Well, infantry is MVC code B because they all link, there's 26 of them, to a letter in the English alphabet because America. So, um, uh, you choose which of the eight options you'd like, and the options are abjurant, 
aviation, medic, engineer, uh, infantry, intelligence, specialized combat, and armor, which is like cavalry. Please. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have a quick look then sure, at the, uh, the backgrounds. I have a question about backgrounds. Shoot. When you're choosing your other skills and your free skills, could I take another point in pilot, or is that does it have to be zero skills? Um, no, no, no. So, uh, wait, wait. When you, where are you? Engineer, you're looking at? Oh, no, no. You're aviation, yeah. aren't you? So the aviation way that, background. So yeah. now that you're choosing your background, so I'm going to say this because both of you guys are in the background area. You have two options. You can either choose the quick set, which gives you uh, your free the, yep. the the free skill, which is pilot plus two predetermined others. So for aviation, it's so electronics and pistol. Pilot, electronics, and pistol. I already have zero pistols. So. Or you can roll for it, in which case you get pilot and you get to roll for two others. So you roll mm -hmm. for three others. Oh, so, on your thing it says you can also just pick. Uh, wait, what is this? On your background, in the background section on your observation. Yeah, it literally says right, right below the little table of the you things. Can just it pick says like this. You wanted, which is why I was picking them. Yeah, decide whether uh, to roll for additional skills or just pick them. Oh yeah, yeah. By pick the, the what, what it's picking. You have to pick the default ones. Yes, oh, okay. it's quick set or roll. And so when you roll, you have to roll at least one growth, and you have to roll at least one learning, and then you have a third one where you can choose which path it goes. So it's nifty. It's nifty the way it works. But then if I roll pilot, I don't get. Do I get more pilot skill, or is it the same as it was? It caps out at one. So what's cool is because. So I could get another point in pilot. Yep, so you can start Okay, that's one. what I wanted to know, whether I could get another, because then it's worth doing in case I get another point in pilot. Yep, and th there's, if, over on the learning side, there's two chances of that happening. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to roll a learning point. Eh, let me, uh, can I post this in chat so people can know? I'm I, can, not really I can display it right through. here, so yeah. people can see uh, what exactly we're looking at. I need to get this open on another screen so I can see it. All right, that makes sense. The wording is a little weird, Midori's but then it might not be. Midori's here. Hello, it Midori. Might your, uh... Hey, Midori. It might hey, be Midori. where you got it from. All right, learning point. Okay, let me see what you rolled. Two exert. I don't even remember what exert is. Uh, exert oh, is like your ability to like push yourself to actually do physical. Oh, behavior. okay. Yep. So you got an exert. So now you have to roll one growth. Weird, because I'm super weak. Uh, so d uh, d six to roll one growth. Yep. Yeah. You roll the two, which means you get to choose one physical stat of your choice and increase it by two. What are the physical stats? Um, yeah, strength, X, and con. Oh, those. Yeah. Oh, okay. So sadly, uh, not, that is not going to increase any of those stats to. No, uh, but I could have a nicer. I could have a nicer number though, couldn't I? Yeah. Yep. 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 To yep. Future. All right. Let's level up that ten. That's cool. And then. And then Another you get to roll learning. one growth or one learning, your choice. Yeah, I'm going learning, okay. and I got perception, which is this is fine. I think that's for, worthwhile. Okay, there you go. And then, you, as you, we said earlier, you got those ones you get, that you spent from your your class, the three points. Okay, uh, did you make a uh, uh, decision yet, Rick, or are we going to bring the attention over to uh, Rookie, who's just sitting there and listening, going, "What did I, well, I mean? Did I get myself into? I've pretty much now. <laughs> I think I've got my choice, but you know. We can bring her in, you know. She doesn't have to sit no, there all no, the stream no, no, doing no, no. nothing. That's fine, because we're almost we're almost done with you anyways. Um... By all means, finish yours. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna dispose of me then? Okay. No, I I figured I'd go for infantry, just you know, awesome. get some extra combat skills, do pretty good at you know shooting things and not dying. So infantry, and are you going to go with the quick set, which uh, infantry actually is uh, any combat of your choice? So you get to choose assault rifle or something else. Um, uh, so it's any combat of your choice plus exert an armor. Or do you want to, um, uh, you know, roll for it and see what you find? You get any combat yeah. still, so you can increase in assault rifle anyways, assault rifle anyways, and then roll for the um, other potential three bonuses. No, I mean, I think that's good, like, assortment of things to get. Just, you know, make sure I don't die. Exert will probably come in useful as well, you know. Shooting things, always useful, so I'll just bump those three up. Okay, so armor is going to go to a 1, because 0 plus 0 equals 1 at character creation. Assault rifles goes to 1, because 0 plus 0 equals 1. And exert goes to 0, which is nice. So you're actually good at assault rifles, uh, good at uh, uh, armor, which you're going to get to what armor is in a little bit. And um, uh, you can exert yourself. Okay, back to you, uh, character gen stuff. Uh, where were we? Boom, boom. 
So after you do the background, you get to like pick a unrelated skill, don't you? Um, yep, yep. So after background, well, that's um, yep. That is one more thing you get to do. So after background is all done, you get to choose one more skill boost of your choice. Any one skill boost of your choice. And it just goes up by one. You can't take it to zero. That makes sense. Oh wait a second. Did I give you guys? Oh, I gave you three free points to spend earlier. A, a character creation. That's not a thing. You didn't. I didn't even hear that, so I didn't do oh, it. Oh, remember when you distributed three points? I said, "Oh, you have three points to spend." I didn't do that. I if don't you believe. Said it. No, no, I said that to him, and he. Yeah. So, so I can't well, survive anymore. Uh, yeah, I think I'm taking oh. back those three from you. I'm gonna pull the carpet out from underneath you. Uh, give me two seconds. Oh, no. to check that. I. I. Sorry. I may have made a mistake. I'm only human. Um, <laughs> I mean, aren't we all in the first session? Yeah. Oh shit. Uh ha. Huh. Uh, yeah, no, I have to take those three back from you. You only got one to spend. So you had spent them on huh. survive. Um, yeah, there was one survive first point. Aid. Yeah, you get one free one as well. And perception. I, I... Survive, first aid, and perception are where you spent them. You have to take two of those back. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry. I know, I'm mean. No, it, it's all right. And, and, then, mm. and then when you're done making that decision, you're going to go over to looking at the Foki. Now we're going to bring our attention over to you, Rookie. How are you doing? I'm, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you ready for this? Yeah. All right, so you already have your attributes putting there. You have the 8, the 14, the 15, the 7, uh, the 8, and the 17. That's a great charisma. That's really good. Um, you already chose your uh, class, which is going to be Infiltrator. And yeah. so we have to start applying the things. So if you have not started applying the things on there, which it looks like you did, armor is zero, pistols is zero, and sniper rifle is zero. Then uh, you're going to copy and paste that basic armor somewhere on the character sheet, which it looks like you already did. Uh, thank you very much. And then you don't get to choose Foki. They're actually chosen for you very specifically. Yeah. So one of them is going to be the, uh, the Foki called Specialist, and it's going to be in decryption specifically. So what this one does, and... Um, uh, yeah, so what this one does is you're going to gain a non-combat, non-biotic skill as a bonus. So your bonus is going to be in decryption, which is currently at zero. Hey, sorry, at negative one. Your decryption now instantly jumps to uh, zero. Mm -hmm. And you can roll 3d6 and drop the lowest die when doing skill checks instead of rolling a flat 2d6, which is amazing. You're good at decryption things. Yeah. Okay, going back. Um... The other free uh, Foki that you get, because you get two of them as this class, which is amazing, is one called Sniper. You actually gain a free skill in the uh, skill Sniper, bringing you from a zero to a one, which is amazing. Um, and you have, uh, when you make surprise attacks with, the, um, with any firearms or bows, you roll 3d6 and drop the lowest one. Surprise attacks are a really unique feature in this game. Um, mm -hmm. They're super, super, super deadly if you make this check and this makes it far more likely that you will so your skill level is at one for sniper and at one for uh sorry at zero for decryption where it stands now yep. going back to your character um you have uh two extra maximum hit points for your character level so you're gonna roll 1d6 plus what's your con you get to roll 1d6 plus three Ooh, rookie! <laughs> Roll max. Make the soldier look like a wimp. Okay, so, <laughs> so please you're no. Forward slash roll space one yeah. d six plus three. And we're gonna have macro set up for you in the future. Nice seven health points. <laughs> look, look, oh, looking God. good. Looking She's good. going first through every door. <laughs> She's, the yeah, she... She's the infiltrator. She's supposed to go first. She's the scout, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, right. Sure. We'll just take her sniper rifle away and throw it very far away. We'll use it as yeah, a bait. you have your Omni Blade and you can just push you in. It'll be fine. I don't, uh, I don't have pistols. What was it? I have pistols. So. Yep, you have pistols as well. You have pistols as well. All right, so now let's go to um, uh, the second part of this class. You actually get a bonus skill point every time you level, which you get right now to spend on your character. Why don't we hold off on that skill point to avoid confusion once we add your backgrounds? So you're going to hold off on that skill point. Next thing you get is your attack bonus is going to be increased to 1. That's the top center of your character sheet right under your attributes. You're going to see your attack bonus. If you'd like to apply that on there quickly. To a 1. To a 1, yes. Beautiful, thank you. Um, and then uh, we already did your health points. 
Uh, and then after first level, we don't care about that, and we don't care about that. We don't care about any of those details because they're after first level. Going back to character creation. You now, because we already have your attributes, we already have your race, we already have your class, and most of those things applied, you have to choose your background. We'd already discussed what the eight are. Uh, yep. You and I had discussed prior in a conversation uh, that maybe you were going to choose um, specialized combat, which is X, or you're going to choose intelligence, which is yeah. C. Intelligence is the common one for infiltrator, but it's not yeah. uh, locked in. And specialized combat is a common one for sentinel, but it's not locked in. Did you look at either of those and see which one you preferred, or no? I had a quick look at intelligence. Yep. Um, intelligence gives you lore zero, connect zero, and administer zero, which are all skills you have nothing in right now. Or you can take free skill of lore and roll for the other abilities. And mm -hmm. specialized combat gives you electronic zero, pilot zero, and decryption zero, which actually bring you decryption to a one, which is amazing. Or you can just take electronics and then roll for the other ones. Which of those were you more interested in? I honestly can't decide between them both. I'm just trying to think maybe about... When it comes to character creation, for me, I like to think about how everybody else is doing it as well. Yeah. So at least then we have something different. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, I, the, the, everybody likes has their own way of doing character creation. You like to be more uh, intermingled with the party and work together yeah. to build it as opposed to, let's all make our characters and throw them together and see what happens. So yeah. then I'm going to turn my attention over to you, Ollie. Ollie, um, th this affects you. Intelligence versus specialized combat are both hovering around what you're going to be good at. Mm -hmm. Did you choose your background yet? Yes, aviation. Remember? Oh, that's right. You chose aviation. So uh, yes, which means you... I don't actually have decryption. Being uh, despite being an engineer, I don't have decryption. But uh, do you have what... electronics? I have electronics. At what skill level? No way. I don't have electronics anymore because I didn't take the quick, quick quick skills. I don't have electronics. You got that free one point that you can spend though at the end of your background. Where did you spend that? I have not spent that anywhere. No way. I put it on talk this... right now, but I could put it wherever. This is why I fucking love it. Because because you chose the class engineer, and so that unlocks certain abilities which we're going to get to exactly. soon. Exactly. Um, but you don't have to be a, uh, an engineer playing a tabletop. You don't have to be an engineer. You don't have to be down in the engineering bay and working. This on is how I wanted to play my pilot. You know. Yeah, you're playing a fucking pilot. I'm, so I'm a pilot brilliant. commander. I mean, I have because of my foci command. I I'm sending the orders out while piloting the fucking ship. No, this is but, uh, this, the, the, no, this is amazing. This is good. So this means, uh, rookie, that if you choose either of these, there is no chance of you stepping on his toes. Exactly. And bringing pilot from negative uh, one to zero just means that if the pilot dies or goes down, you yeah. can fly. You can fly your, exactly. your 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 longboat or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So so that's that's a good one for specialized combat, and then there's intelligence. It can always be co-pilot, you know, maybe. I'm well, you're nice. remember, you guys are technically part of a bigger ship, which we'll get to soon. I... Go ahead. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to go specialized combat. Okay, cool. Specialized combat is where you're leaning towards. Now, you do have the quick set, which is immediately electronics, pilot, and description. Or you can take electronics and roll for the rest. Let's do it. Let's roll. Okay, so one, you have to roll <laughs> 1d6, 1d8, and then after that, you get to choose. 1d6. Mm-hmm. You roll the one, which is plus one to any attribute of your choice, which is amazing. So instead of pilot or decryption, you got that. Um, looking at your attributes, um, if you were to increase your charisma by one, that would get you to the magical plus two. That like very hard to get your hands on bit. Um, anything else, if you increased it by one, it would just be nice to have that buffer. It doesn't affect you mechan- Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not true, that's not true. Um, if you increased your sh your intelligence by one, you would go from a negative one to a zero. To a zero. I might do that one. Yeah, that's actually yeah. that's good because being a decryption person, that kind of like saves you a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. That's, that is done. All right, awesome. Good, good. That works out. Specialized combat okay. it is. All right, roll me a D8, please, and thank you. Let me display for chat what it is that we're looking at at the moment. Six. Okay. So that six, and sadly it's in a spot where it's a little hard to read. A six is pilot. Hey, you're co pilot, anyways. <laughs> nice. nice. Okay, and now you get to choose. Do you want to be, do you want to be uh, one more growth or one more learning? Oh God, I don't know. Um, 
explain them again to me? Um, only... So growth is going to be roll one more on the D6 chart. Learn is going to be roll one more on the D8 chart. The D6 chart has a chance of exert, has a chance of any skill of your choice, and a chance of boosting your stats if you care to. Learning has a, uh, a chance of uh, one of those many skills. Let's do learning. All right, skills it is. So what am I doing again? 1d8. So you can actually press up, and it'll go to your most recent roll anyways. Yeah. Seven. Decryption. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> you got pilot and decryption anyways. Actually with perfect. The bonus, with the fucking bonus to intelligence. <laughs> oh, my God. We found the one with the shamrock in their arse. Oh. <laughs> That's oh. really useful. You're, you're, you're like... You're gonna be a, an asset to the team. That's what I say. Jesus, good for yeah. you. There's you Rick got... over there. He's just gonna be leaning on his like Gatling gun, just like waiting, <laughs> We're doing all the tech things. No, Great. seriously, you have no penalties. Great bonuses. Oh man, you're just all around awesome. Okay, <laughs> now now technically at this point in time in character creation, you do get to choose one more skill of your choice to increase yes. by one to the maximum of skill level one. So if you would like to bring a negative one to a, a zero or a zero to a, a, a Ooh, one. Oh, I didn't know we could take something from zero to one. Yeah, yeah any, anything that you would like is no penalties or whatever. And if yeah. you would even choose like, okay, yeah, 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 Dale, listen, I'm good with sniper rifle and I'm good with pistol. My pistol's a zero, which is not bad. I kind of want to be able to work a shoddy if I get my hands on, on one too. You can do yeah. that as well. There's no limitations. Any one skill you see on there, you can bump it. Yeah, because I'm just thinking like if, if I am gonna be you know helping out i'm not gonna always be at a distance so it might just be a good idea to pistol yeah. is, is good in, in uh up close or uh decent length i mean yeah. it, it's a pistol right i yeah. saw you play yeah and it's very versatile as well yeah pistol pistol is my go-to right <laughs> but the thing is everyone's gonna have pistol whereas if you take shotgun and we get some really fancy shotguns they're basically yours. I actually I don't know what uh, Rick's gonna do with guns. Uh, Rick is not immediately proficient with shotguns or with no. a weapon as well, uh, or sniper rifles. He's immediately proficient with pistols and assault rifles, but can can eventually learn the others too. I am minus two in all of those, except for <laughs> except for pistol. Except for pistol, which I am um, good at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm did there, you I'm did you, any there tickle your your fancy? I'm oh. taking pistol. Oh. I, I, I do have to mention one thing. Pistol's a good idea. It's combat. Mm -hmm. But if you look two spots below pistol, there might be a skill there that catches your eye. Yeah, I was thinking that. Um... <sighs> Fuck it. The skill is sneak, by the way. <laughs> yeah. It's the infiltrating bit of the infiltrator, yeah. yeah. Um, well, you'll still be kind of good at it anyway, but you'll be better. Yeah, the the cloak ability doesn't exist yet in this in this world. It's still back to zero. <laughs> I've gone, I've, I've, I have changed my mind. I did, I did originally. Joe, when you were saying to Rick earlier about putting in those extra three, I did put one in sneak. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I took them out again because you said that you weren't allowed three. So I'm gonna go for it because pistol is already at zero, so that is better than. Awesome. You're an infiltrator. You should be able to sneak. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of in the name. It just makes sense, really, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool, 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 cool. I, I like the way it's coming together. Your character is coming together very well. Um, <laughs> let, let's go back over to Rick. Did you find out where you wanted to spend that uh, last skill point? Um, yeah, I put it back in perception. That's I right. figured I need to be able to see stuff. Okay, yeah. instead of the survive, you put it in perception. Cool. And then, yeah, um, did you have a chance to look over the foki? Which uh, you don't have to worry about rookie because they're chosen for you by your class. Mm -hmm. I did, yeah, because I did see in the uh, the soldier class thing that I get a free level in a combat foci. Mm -hmm. So That's I've been looking to... around. And... I get two. Oh, we get another please. foci. Uh, everybody at. Wait, let me think. Because our, our double class check gives us one, but it's like of this type. I don't know. Do we get another one as oh, well? Oh, everybody gets to choose a foci as well. That's right. So rookie actually That's walks in with three fucking foci. Which was like, Jesus. I remember when that update happened to the actual rules of the game, and the, the one person in the game that was an adventurer was like, fuck yeah. So you actually get a third Foki of your choice. You do need to look at those. But what were you looking at, please, Rick? I was thinking, like, well, I was at first assuming that I only had to pick one, so I was kind of in between Die Hard mm -hmm. and Gunslinger. Okay. Die Hard gives me... Um, on level one, it gets me an extra two maximum hit points per level, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And this bonus applies retroactively if you take this foci after the first level. Mm -hmm. You automatically stabilize if mortally wounded by anything smaller than a heavy weapon. Yeah. Which, so uh, basically... A heavy weapon is like a fucking Gatling gun or a minigun. So that's most weapons. Go ahead. Yeah, and then we've got Gunslinger, on the other hand. Mm -hmm. Which gives me, at level 1, gives me any firearm skill as a bonus skill. Which is beautiful. So you can I could... Any one of those. Yeah, and then I can draw or holster a stowed ranged weapon as a free action. You may add your firearm skill level to a ranged weapon's damage roll or shock damage, if any. Which is amazing, so if you... I will also mention though, as a side of that, because of the way armor works in Mass Effect, the, the, the holstering and, and grabbing isn't going to be as useful. Um... Because of hard light points or whatever, no, right? No, 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 the hard points don't make it so it's quicker and easier to pull away, so uh, what it is is... You can, uh, what is it, you can draw or holster a, st oh, stowed weapon. That actually is going to be useful for him if he chooses to uh, oh. beef up a skill that's not, so, um, just Stowed really quickly, the way that armor works for early characters, like later on there's better armor you can upgrade to, you only have two hard points. Hard points are spots of your armor where it magnetically seals the weapon to you and even the mass is slightly reduced, so it actually doesn't uh, negatively impact um, uh, your character's like carrier capacity, right? So one is always at your hip, and the second one is always at your back. Now, when you play the Mass Effect games, you see that there's three at the back and one at the hip. Yay! Well, you're not in the N7. You're not in N7, right? You are just a, a lowly like X2 or something like that. So um, uh, we're not worthwhile yet. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, so you only have the two hard points: one at your hip and one at your back. So your third weapon, should you choose to have one. Um, would be stowed away in like a backpack or something. This would allow you to pull out that third weapon as quickly as you're able to pull anything else. And since you get a free firearm skill, your assault rifle is already maxed out right now. You Sure, you can beef up uh, your pistol to a one, or you can choose like say shotgun and have a shotgun that you can easily draw out as well. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking about because, you know, I don't need my pistol as much if I have to pull out my pistol and like try to shoot people with that something has obviously gone wrong yeah, so yeah. i was thinking about just taking that like extra bonus points and just putting it in shotguns it takes me up to a minus one instead of a minus two nope, so i'm less terrible minus with it two to a zero actually oh really yeah 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 when, weapons are negative two or zero and then go up oh that's cool yeah so i'll probably go and do that then sure so gunslinger you're sold on and then you can actually have a shoddy that you can kind of like just pull out and be like so the way I imagine it, and this is your character, so you describe it as you'd like, is you have those hard points, those magnetic seals that the weapons stick to that have their mass slightly reduced to make them lighter. But then you also have like a holster that literally hangs at your lower back. So you can kind of like reach around and pull this whole, the shotgun out from this holster. But again, your character, you'll describe them as you like moving forward. Um, for a week so I can draw them for the stream. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, so you, um, did you look at any of the other foci? Don't answer that question yet. You'll also see that in the character creation area, there's something called class specialties. Now, class specialties, you actually have unlocked to you every few levels. Oh. You get a free one that you can do. Class specialties are going to look like the uh, abilities that you usually see when playing Mass Effect. So, adrenaline burst, dampening, overkill, things like that. Or, you can sacrifice a foci to get one of those instead. So, um, you do not at level 1 have any of these given to your character. You'll get one uh, given to you at level 2, right? It's a level 2 and then level 4 and then level 7 is the guy they have it set up. Um, so if you want, instead of getting another Foki, which you can totally, by the way, go Gunslinger 2 if you wanted to. Nothing stopping you from doing that. Uh, or grabbing um, Die Hard, which you're looking at. You could potentially get something like Overkill. I'm going to describe this one and then I'm going to leave it to your uh, discretion. Um, level one of overkill, it is, you are an expert at firing uh, the rifle for long periods with seriously reduced overheating and, and extra accuracy. Um, once per scene, you may activate this ability. Uh, activate this ability for a number of rounds equal to your assault rifle skill plus one. So it's maximum right now of two rounds. Um, the assault rifle can now be fired to suppress. 10 uh, discharges of ammunition is fired in one round, and every target in front of the weapon that is not under cover, under hard cover, I should say, is automatically hit for half the normal damage. So more or less you just go and you roll damage, and everybody takes half damage uh, from whatever it is that you roll in front of you. Um, a successful evasion save eliminates this damage because they can try to like ducking in, in from cover or whatever behind it. So it's like kick open a door and just like everybody inside of it 
Comprende? I mean, Who's yeah. the sign of Dora? Yeah. Well, you know, you know. Um, so that just describe that one for you. It's your discretion where you want to go. I'm going to bring my attention over to all. Uh, Rookie, are you looking at the Foki and stuff like that now? Yeah. Okay, so once again, see, here's the thing. You can take the the the, the with decryption. You can take overload Foki, which is something I, I was looking at as a potential yeah. forehand. Yeah, because her decryption, she meets the minimum uh, decryption of one, doesn't she? Where's her skill? Oh, no, not not Overload. Overload's Electronics one. Which one is... Uh, oh, damp uh, one? Sabotage. Sabotage. Yeah, well, both sabotage. of those look super badass, and there's eventually, like, AI hacking, and, like, there's a, there's a whole skill tree over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to get, like, leveled up as we make more and more rules. There's also the Sniper Rifle one, too. It's just, I don't know how useful it would be Assassination at, like, a, a character gen. So the, oh, the uh, Sabotage one, just for those that are listening... Um, once per scene, uh, you may activate this ability. It deals 1d4 points of damage per level in decryption, so right now 1d4 damage, in a 6 meter radius to VI and AI. Uh, but it also, in that 6 meter radius, uh, overheats enemy weapons for a number of rounds equal to the decryption skill level. So right now, in a 6 meter radius, you would have everybody's weapons overheat and stop functioning for one round. Which, if you think about, like, tactics, you could do something like that, literally, beep, 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 beep right as the soldier is kicking open a door and running in. So he mm. kicks open the door, you shut down all their weapons, and then he has a whole turn of, you know, uh, just, uh, I'm thinking some Quentin Tarantino-style gore fest here uh, right now. Yeah. <laughs> while, while they're like, no! And it's like camera slows down and like way <laughs> too loud of over music happens while the actual sound effects of the scene are completely deafened. And he's just kind of like, <laughs> for the record my other foci is going to be connected which is uh sort of similar to your rule in my game scott where if you spend some time in a non-hostile location you get a web of contacts yep yep i feel like that that you know you guys are all completely combat focused and i'm just gonna like talk to everyone <laughs> it'd be great I mean, someone needs to do it. Yeah. yeah. Someone just needs to do yeah. it. And you're Don't in command, me. so you might as well. Don't shoot me. I'm... Don't shoot me. I've got weak bones. <laughs> I'm an L1. I'm just an ensign. I'm just an what? ensign. What was I'm not an ensign. What was Will Wheaton's character uh, over in uh, uh, Next Gen? He was an ensign. Ensign what? I can't remember. Oh, what the hell is his name? Um, oh. Oh. Uh, Wesley. Wesley. There you go. Here, here. Sure. Ensign Wesley. <laughs> Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, bring Weird. the attention over to you, uh, uh, Rookie. Did you find a Foki that you liked? Um, I originally was looking at Assassin or Assassination. Um, um, yep, Assassin is one, and then Assassination was the other one. So Assassin gains yeah. Sneak, so that would bring you to a one. Yeah. Conceal an object no larger than a knife or pistol. Um, yeah. Uh, and you can draw or produce uh, this weapon as an instant action. Um, mm. and, uh, point blank range, uh, oh, um, your point blank range attacks cannot miss the target. That's pretty amazing. That's like, yeah. so that means point blank range attacks. So if you use a pistol in point blank range and you shoot at them, uh, you always hit. Yeah. Cool. Which would get me out of the sick situation quite quick, right? <laughs> That's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Which is why I was thinking that, but I was also toying with the idea of overload. I'm not overload. Sabotage. I, th I think it's just you can produce this object as an instant action and your point. So I think it means the rounds that you produce and shoot, you can't miss. Mm. I, I don't think that means every round you can't miss no. because that would be ridiculous, right? Yeah. It's like you get one free shot off, basically. Yeah. Which in this system, I'm fairly sure, is amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, a shot can be very dangerous. So that's a really, really good one. My character can be killed by a stray bullet right now. Yep. Well, we're gonna get into armor and stuff like that shortly. Uh, yes, yeah, so I liked that. Okay, cool. So uh, that one jumps at you, and then just because I have to uh, point it out because it's my job as a DM to present all options to those that don't know all the rules. The other one that we, you were just mentioned was assassination, and this one you're probably not going to take. But assassination, infiltrator, sniper rifle one is the requirements, uh, or or soldier sniper rifle one. Once per scene, you may activate this ability when making a surprise attack, which usually takes a whole minute to do. You reduce the number of rounds it takes to set up the surprise attack by number of rounds equal to your skill level times two. So sadly, at this level, it's 
shields only reduce it by two rounds, so it still takes eight rounds to set it up. And the, uh, your attack deals maximum damage times 1.5. So if your maximum damage with a rifle is, let's say, 24, you actually deal 36 points of damage instantly with that attack. Um, but again, this is like, a, how often are you going to be able to have time to set up a bead on your target? And Yeah, exactly, which is so. why I was leaning away from that. Yep, of course. So I like the assassin on you. I, I have to say your character is a little scary. Um, <laughs> um, you, you know can, it. Oh, wait. Oh, that's funny. When you apply things into your foci, it automatically goes to class specialization. That is clearly a glitch uh, yep. in my code, so I will fix that. Yeah, that, that had me confused as well. I'm like, eh, I'm doing didn't something wrong. It. I'm like, meh, whatever. Re re remember, I, I, wrote, I wrote these codes, so uh, uh, I, the fun part is... Uh, because Roll20 is more for PC than it is for Mac. Um, I do all my code writing on Macs because it's just better that way because I'll, I'll use like a text editor and then port it over and then fiddle. But like when I actually go to test, test the sheet on the Mac, it does not display correctly. But if I test it on the PC, it looks exactly as you see it right now. So that, that's one of the reasons why I'm having a hard time with the snapping too. It's just says it's a Roll20 thing. So I'm having a hard time with, with what's called uh, the responsiveness. So if I make this sheet just a tiny bit smaller, all of a sudden it snaps out of place, like like seen here. You know what I mean? Um, I'd also recommend having the foci text boxes stretch. That yeah, it's it's kind of I've hard to read. I've them in my notes read. for now, uh, but they, they oh, don't have you, you, what, what I What I personally do for that one is I just seriously sum that up. Like, do you really need gaining non-combat yes. non uh, biotic skill as a... Yes. Like, uh, it's just one of those... Yes. I, you right, 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 like... Uh, I'm going to need to say it all out loud when I go somewhere and you won't let me use connected, okay? <laughs> or authority. I'm going to need to say the entire thing <laughs> so I'll have it all ready. I, I, will, I will make your Foki box bigger. You're welcome. Yes, please. Just advice, just in the future. No, 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 no. I will, I will make it bigger. That is, that is a fair request. And I will meet your request, Ollie. Who's calling the shots here? What's going on? Um, <laughs> you now, me later. Yeah, but um, yeah. For those that understand text editors, I use Sublime Three. Is what I generally use. I love the features in it. So, like, let's say I'm trying to change, like, I, I don't know, like a, a bit of code. I need to change. Like, it's written in 50 different places at once. I can highlight all 50 different spots in the in the code simultaneously and change them all simultaneously, which is like. Oh my god, when it's so good and snippets are so easy to, to, to build and snap in and stuff. Oh my god, it's it's good. Good. All right, um you chose your second Foki, uh Rick, what was it? Yeah, I just uh, I was thinking about die hard, but uh, I figured, you know, might as well be better to not get hit in the first place, so I just doubled down on gunslinger level two. Allows me to yeah. reload a ranged weapon as an on turn action if it takes no more than one round to reload. And even when I miss with a firearms attack, I do an unmodified 1d4 damage. Jesus. Fuck. <laughs> wow. I can't die if I, the other people die first, you know. Okay. Gotta shoot stuff. Jesus. Fuck. Okay. All right. Rick, you are a badass. Uh, uh, like rookie, it. you are a badass. Uh, did we cover everything? I'm going to go over you two before we bring our attention fully to Ollie. We have your rate class, your race is chosen. You're stuck being a human. We have your attributes yep. rolled and the 14 thrown in there. We have the modifiers are already set for you, which is yay. We have your, um, your uh, background selected, and so the skills and ability modifiers and all that that come with it. We have all of the class features thrown onto the character. Uh, we have that bonus skill point selected. We have uh, any foci that come from your character selected, as well as any foci, the one foci that you get for character generation itself. Um, I think that, my situation. <laughs> that, that, that covers everything, I think. Now we have to choose your physical save, uh, your mental save, and your... your uh, uh, well, how do we do that? So that one works. It's a base 15. Is it instantly what it is? And then you're going to make a slight reduction to it based off of your modifiers. So, okay. Uh, the way that that reduction works is one second. Um, so for your for all of you, your physical saving throw set it to fifteen right now. Boop, it's at fifteen. Yay! Mental fifteen. Yay! Evasion fifteen. Yay! Once you're done, your physical saving throw you're going to reduce it by. Um, you get to choose which modifier you prefer better, um, strength or constitution. If either one of those has a modifier, choose the better of the modifiers and reduce it by that much. So for Rookie Wookie, she has a 0 and a 1. She's going to choose Constitution and reduce her physical save to a 14. Yep. OK. 
Okay? And once everybody's done making that reduction, assuming there's no confusion, you're next going to do your mental save. Your mental saves are going to be based off of um, uh, intelligence and, oh, sorry, mental saves are based off of wisdom and charisma. So you choose your better <laughs> of wisdom and charisma. <laughs> I have one! 14! Yay! <laughs> I'm the smartest soldier around, but my men's like, no, no. I am not gonna get taken over by, like, Asari and stuff. I'm and great. I apologize in advance. I'm, I'm, just, I'm a tool of murder, and I'm gonna get turned upon you're gonna you get at turned, some point. Yeah, you're gonna get turned by some space magic, and we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill everyone. Too bad in episode you 8, guys. that's how it ends. Uh -huh. Aaron. So, and then your your evasion is going to be intelligence and dex, the greater of those two. So, again, rookie, rookie, you have a zero to one, so you're going to reduce your mental to a four, your evasion to a 14. Actually, rookie, you 14s across the board? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. And, and <laughs> it, had, you, had you chosen uh, charisma instead of intelligence, you could have even had a 13 up there. But, obviously, yeah. the intelligence was the better option because of your charisma. Yeah, it was. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Wow. Holy crap. That's, um... Good for you, and everybody else has theirs on there. All right, um, now we're going to bring our, our attention fully over to uh, Ollie for a second. I want to uh, have you explain through your character, because nobody's seen oh, that generation that's true. at all. All right, uh, aviation, engineer. He's a pilot. He's, he's an engineer mostly. Uh, I, I was sort of thinking maybe he'd be a tinkerer, but I, I the way he ended up uh, is, is much more of a commander because the foci are authority and connected, which means he can yell at people and make them do things, and he can go places and get them people to do things, which is great. Uh, which means I also have command and uh, connect and stuff like that. Uh, I have a one in pilot because he's trained to be a pilot. That's his actual job, but he's, you know, he's, he's uh, a service officer. He's a pilot who's gone up through the ranks and is quite, that's fairly high ranking, you know, that's more higher rank than most peeps. Uh, and that's really it. There's there's actually nothing fancy. Like I have no amazing skills. Uh, I'm pretty much average. Uh, I'm just good at yelling at people. <laughs> I'm good at yelling at people. I mean people. that works. Uh, which is good because I'm the commanding officer. I also have three HP, so I'm I'm not I'm not looking too good. You have three HP? Is that what you I have roll? Three HP. Oh, I haven't got any constitution modifier. Fuck me! And yes. you don't get a bonus because you're not a, a fighter type. Nope. Oh man, you are even. I, I I'm I'm not lying. I'm staying in the ship. Yeah. No. You're, you're <laughs> I mean, I got a four with a plus two, so I'm not doing I'm much better. I'm gonna take rookie with me when I go to do connected in case someone tries to shank me <laughs> in like an alleyway. That's basically how it's gonna have to be. Oh I need God. to ask an escort at all times, or I'll die. This is a. This I have your bodyguard. <laughs> I, I, I love I love how much of a wimp you are. This makes me very happy. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Um, all right, and uh, you said for your uh, foci, you automatically yeah, authority and connected. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because you, if you had you had chosen uh, sentinel, you would have had two foci plus. Um, yes, but I had like one non-combat foci. Yep. Uh, but the advantage is I get to re-roll it basically if it fucks up. Gotcha. Uh, so which is um, important because authority is actually a roll. Connected isn't a roll. Yeah. Connected is just it's a thing you can do, but it takes a week. Authority uh, is like a bonus special type of role I can do to yell at people and make them do things, which nice. is hilarious. It's not intimidation. They have to be neutral or uh, allied to me, but it's it's going to be like getting people on the ship to do what I want them to do, you know? That's how I'll it's going to be. Mind. Yeah. I don't think I can do it to you. I wouldn't do that anyway, because that's not fun. Well, well, you you can you're, you can make command checks against the party. You know what I mean? Like, it, it is something that does work, but... Um... I never like doing they, those they, kind no, of... No, 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 They choose to RP. So what it is is you, you can choose to RP or whatever, but it's one of those moments where you can make a command check to see exactly how authoritative you... Because more or less, mm. uh, you can... They can... We're humans, right? They're, they're PCs. They can feel the gravity of the situation based off of the way you say things, blah, blah, blah. But their characters don't necessarily, especially when you're dealing with people with eight wisdoms. So um, you can make a command check. and a I really just don't good know success, what's good for them. A really good success could be one of those things where you can't control the character, but you can certainly make them feel the gravity of what it is that you're saying through the check. And so the decision that they make as a character will be based off of their new information of, no, you can tell that he's being really serious. This is no joke. And so, like, I describe that, and then they can change their opinion based off of, oh, Ollie said it, versus, oh, Ollie said it, you know? Yeah. So you automatically had arms and pistols at zero. 
Mm -hmm. and you uh, automatically have uh, command and connect at zero. And then because of what you chose, you also got a couple of other things. Do you have no skill level ones? Oh, you have. Pilot I have pilot one. And that's it. Gotcha. Yeah. What did you? Where did you spend your extra point? I'm sorry. Uh, at pilot one. Oh, so you get to pilot one. Okay. Making cool. it pilot one. I was I was torn between having that and talk, but then I ended up taking connect, which is another sort of talking. Yeah, connect uh, is to to make ball. connections, to get information, yeah. stuff like that. Whereas talking is actually like convincing people of things. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what I figured. Uh, you so got I got a good charisma that. anyways, so your talk ends up being Yeah, exactly. So it should be fine. Yeah. So. Uh, it's just. Just how I, I thought getting good pilot would be nice, because then I can focus on that, and then I have an excuse to not be in the fight. Cool, cool. <laughs> All right, awesome. His master plan. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be. It'll be the kind of thing where I drop you off on the on the, the the shuttle, and then I raise the shuttle up, and I follow you with the lights, and I fire at people. That's the plan. Nice. So <laughs> no <laughs> stealth. <laughs> Combat suits use a dual oh, layer that's how shots work in Mass Effect. I just opened the body armor area, armor with and so the codex is areas that don't reading out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so everybody can hear the uh, the codex. That's funny. So um, next thing we're going to do is start going over some of your equipment because uh, it feels like the characters ah. are really coming together. So yeah. um, how we do that? <clears throat> over in the um, the the yeah. Uh, can we take a short break? Oh, yeah, I'm, I need oh, to I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm like so Usually much into it. Usually have hourly breaks. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Usually it's every hour. hour, but I'm just like so like, oh, vegan characters. Yeah, we'll take a break. <laughs> break. We'll be right back. I'm so sorry. We'll take a break. break. We'll be right back. Um, uh, thank you everybody for sticking around so far. Um, we'll just take a few minutes, okay? See y'all shortly. Bye. <laughs>